Welcome back. Now, of course, Lotus Cup Europe wouldn't be right without drivers joining us from all over Europe. And this weekend, Arturo Mazzano and Stefano Dust join us from Lotus Cup Italy, who last year invited us to race with them at Imola. And this year, they'll join us not only here this weekend, but of course, also in Spa. Arturo, you've raced in many different championships over the years, including Formula One. Ja, ja fait le début. I started 25 years ago driving Ferraris. I've been driving Formula 1 for 10 years with uh, various uh, uh, people like uh, Williams, Ferrari, March and so on. Uh, unfortunately, I never drove for Lotus. Uh, it's now a long time away and I'm not as young as in the past, but I'm still enjoying driving this car. Lotus I'm driving Lotus now because uh, Lotus cars, these are GT cars, they are very safe and are very efficient. In the past I didn't want to drive for Lotus, also I could probably have done it. Uh, the reason being that uh, the Lotus Formula 1 cars were not as safe, so I prefer to avoid it, but I'm catching up now and driving uh, Lotus GT cars. Stefano, you organise Lotus Cup Italy and you're here racing this weekend. How are you enjoying yourself? I'm very happy to, uh, to, do, to do the race here or many course and uh, it's the first race that uh, we do all together with the Lotus Cup Europe. We already did uh, two Lotus Cup races in Italy and um, I'm happy there are a lot of cars uh, and the paddock uh, is nice. The big difference that uh, there is a uh, between the Lotus Cup Italy and the Lotus Cup Europe is that uh, in Lotus Cup Europe uh, there are many, many different cars with many, many different performance. We, are, uh, we have uh, two types of cars, uh, 211 and the Exige, and uh, we have uh, a kit that uh, can apply the, the 211 and the kit uh, for the Exige. So the, the performance are very similar between the cars. There are many Lotus dealers who support the drivers in this series and I'm here now with Luke who's manager of Borsier Competition. Hi Luke, this is your first year with Lotus Cup Europe and you've raced in many other championships including Formula 3. How has this relationship come about? I was doing Lotus already and we specialized into tuning and modifying cars, Lotus cars in France. So we have, we felt for the customer service we had uh, to go racing, both for our image and to show our knowledge. Christophe is one of seven drivers run by Team Borsier. Let's meet him now. Christophe, you're always one of the front runners. How do you do it? I try to follow my British friends, but it's very complicated because they know most trucks and are very skilled drivers. Together with Luke, we try to improve on the car, we try to improve on the driving, and uh, we hope one day to, be, to end up in the front. Well, the cars are heading out now onto track to take their grid for race two. It's a 30 minute race from a rolling start and the heat is absolutely sweltering. So it's gonna be quite a challenge for them out there. Here's your commentator. Certainly will, Gemma, a wonderful field of Lotus Cup Europe cars making their way round behind the pace car. It's Roman Rotru who takes pole position once more with Christoph Lezondra alongside. Andreas Hulsleitner is third with Philippe Loop in fourth position. Big field with Gregory Rass starting 11th. He'll be looking to avoid a first lap incident this time around and Thierry Verheist as well often improves over the course of the race. Dennis van den Sarvel starts 22nd. He had a great first race of the weekend as did Gavin Kirby who starts in 23rd place leading the production class runners on to the rear of the field. Well John Rass made his way up the pack in race one. Will he do the same this time around? Cars forming up side by side as David Harvey pulls off again on the formation lap, sadly, as away they go. And well, Routro has pulled the pin very early here because they should be going Noah's Ark style two by two across the line, but Routro has gone and across the line they go to start the race in single file. So Romain Routro leading away, Christophe Lisandre, who has gone with him in second place, the pair of them running much as they were in race one. Everybody else streaming through, but already the field beginning to string itself out just a little bit. There's some dust being kicked up as they power in to the estrial curve, the long right-hander for the first time in this 30-minute race. There is Olivier Cunat, and would you believe it, he is busy battling away with Stefano Daste once more. Battle is rejoined as at the head of the field, Rautero is pulling away from Christophe 
Christoph Lizandra and then Andres Hulsleithner as Kunat looks the inside of Stefano Daste. We go in car with Stefano Daste. Now, will we see the bright yellow machine, Olivier Kunat, appearing to the right of the screen? Oh, yes, we do. Through goes Olivier Kunat. Daste is pushed wide. He tries to hold the line, but no way through there as he just about scrabbles across the curve. So he moves out in battle for Exige Honours. And good afternoon to Mark Gooday as Mark Gooday picks his way through as well. So the three cars who really enlivened the first race are now once more running absolutely together. And they've got Gregory Rass and Thierry Verheist on their tail as well. So those five battling positions, Tom Chatway in the 211 picks his way through. Mark Gooday looks the inside of Olivier Kunat as they go through the 180 hairpin, kicking up the grass. We watch it from Stefano Daste's point of view. Daste then tries to visit the gravel at Imler. He just about scrabbles through. We've got a great view here of Mark Gooday right on the tail of Olivier Kunat. They make their way up towards Chateau d'Eau at the head of the field. Andres Holzleitner in third position has got Philippe Loop and Steve Williams in his tail. Williams looking to the inside of Loop as they go into Chateau d'Eau. Not a lot of room there. As has Williams made the move stick? We look backwards from Williams as Scott Cruikshank also tries to pick his way past Philippe Loop. Williams has made that move stick. We'll see when they arrive at Lise as he goes for a late move and Steve Williams is going to go through into fourth position as they go into Lise to complete that one. So Williams goes fourth. Philippe Loop contests the issue around the outside. They're bottled up as well behind the Austrian Andreas Holzleitner. So the four of them running very close. As Mark Gooday loses it and Gooday goes into the wall and retires from the race. The 211 rotates into the tyre barrier. Well, we can see Mark Gooday moving in the car. The car, fortunately, well off the racing line, so hopefully he won't be too much in the path of the oncoming traffic. Everybody else streaming on to the second lap of the race as we watch Franco Bobbiese going through in towards Estril at the head of the field. Roman Rotaru has got Christophe Lezondra right on his tail as Gooday clambers over the tyre barrier through the hit wall partition good to see he's okay unfortunately his machine a little bit less so well with all of the action Philippe Luke has now made his way up into third position Andreas Holzleitner in fourth he makes contact with Scott Cruikshank he turned across to cover the line and now Cruikshank has got Olivier Kuna alongside him also in the mix is Steve Williams and is Kuna going to pick his way past Williams no he's not but he is going to make his way past Andreas Holzleitner so brilliant dicing here from Lotus Cup Europe as Williams and Cruikshank Make their way on towards the hairpin, midpoint of the lap. Cruikshank looking to the inside of Steve Williams. No way through there as they set off in pursuit of Philippe Loop. And yes, Scott Cruikshank pushing as hard as he can. As we've got Gemma in the pit lane with Mark Gooday. Mark, what happened? I got carried away. Second gear out of the bend and I just floored it a tiny bit too much. Lost control, which I haven't done very often in my life, but that was a bad one. Got a bit excited. I caught Scotty and Steve and I was thinking, right, I can have this. I blew it. Idiot. Well, idiot or not, I think he was just racing. It's brought out the safety car as so the field all bunch up behind the pace car. So the advantage that the Borsier competition men had gained at the head of the field has really whittled down to nothing. It does give us the opportunity to admire this enormous Lotus Cup Europe field in all its splendour as they make their way around the former home of the French Grand Prix. The first race here held back in 1991 and never present on the calendar until just a couple of seasons ago. As the heat shimmers off these machines, it's a boiling day here in Nevers in the middle of France. Long trip over for many of the drivers, but the circuit and the paddock camaraderie more than makes up for the journey as James Knight and Gavin Kirby leading the production class make their way through towards the rear of this field as the pace car's pulled in we're about to go green once more across the line goes Romain Rauchero as we've got a string of five Lotus 211s at the head of the field Christophe Lizandra has got the run on Rauchero and goes through into the lead of the race Christophe Lizandra moves past his teammate and moves into the lead very nicely done from Lissandra. Now, can he hold the line through Estoril? This corner is absolutely key in setting up the run to the Adelaide hairpin, which is where we've seen so much of the action this weekend. Olivier Kuna in the pugilistic exige right on the tail of Scott Cruikshank. Kuna having a great weekend, and he's really in the hunt overall for honours here. Steve Williams now on the tail of Philippe Loop. Loop has to defend hard and early because Williams now jinx to the inside of Philippe Loop. Williams putting himself up the inside, not sure that Loop's really going to be able to defend. No, he's not, as Kuna goes to the inside of Scott Cruikshank, who closes the door very, very late indeed. Across the curbs goes Cruikshank, and I think Olivier Kuna for the moment 
may have just decided to sit back and watch how things proceed up ahead of Christophe Lissandra. He's being chased down by Roma Rautero, Philippe Loup driving very well this weekend, although he has lost out to Steve Williams. Williams really gave Loop absolutely no opportunity to defend, but we've got the five leading cars as close as you like as they make their way through the hairpin as they then accelerate on towards Chateau d'Eau, which is a potential overtaking opportunity. The very slow right-hander as Rautero, well, he's conceded the advantage to Christophe Lisandre, but he's now right in his tail once more. They go through the English chicane and then up into Chateau d'Eau. Anyway, through there for Altero. No, there's not. So he just follows in behind him with Steve Williams, Philippe Loop, and Scott Fruchank, all in very close attendance. We have then got Olivier Kuna and Stefano Daste with Gregory Rask chasing down Andreas Holzleitner. Simon Deacon has got the number six car, Matteo Castiglioni, right on his tail. And Castiglioni goes through it. Estrell, brilliant move from the Italian. There wasn't really a lot of room there, but through he goes, and that enables him to build a little bit of an advantage over his Lotus Cup Italy rival Fortina, who is there in the white car at the rear of the shot. So Castiglione, who unfortunately explored the limits of the gravel track in race one, is going very well in pursuit now of Tom Chatwear in race two. Beautifully presented sky blue and white exige makes its way through the Adelaide Hairpin. He's got the all black machine of Sam Deacon on his tail as we get word from race control that Roman Rautero has got a, a penalty, drive-through penalty for a jump start. And, well, we thought he went a little bit early. The clock of the course has concurred, so Roman Rautero has had to pit in. Here he is now. Now, let's see where he has rejoined the fray. At the moment, he's running more or less alone. He's just ahead of Olivier Kuna. Well, here is the race leader, Christophe Lissandra. So Lissandra is in the lead, as he was. And then we've got... Philippe Loop, Steve Williams, Scott Cruikshank in the red car. And there is Roman Rautero in fifth position. So Rautero has lost out. He's dropped back to fifth place. He's also lost a lot of track space as well. So we've got the leading quartet, who would now be well advised possibly not to race too much amongst themselves and do what they can to pull away from Roman Rautero. Rautero lights a blaze. He's doing what he can to reel in Scott Cruikshank as we follow Cruikshank through the Nürburgring chicane on to the... 180 degree hairpin beautifully turned out. Red Lotus 211 and Cruikshank having a good 2010 thus far. You can see the gravel scattered across the circuit as various cars at this absolutely packed race weekend here at Magny Court have explored the circuit limits a little bit more. Well, this is now beginning to look very good for Christophe Lissandra because Lissandra isn't really under immediate pressure from Philippe Loop, and Loop in turn is dropping back because he's got Steve Williams to worry about. As I say that, Lissandra runs wide going through Chateau d'Eau. So Christophe Lissandra has got Philippe Loop with renewed vigour right in his tail. Great battle this as they make their way down towards Lise. We are leaving Manicor for a short break. We'll be back in just a couple of moments' time for the conclusion of the race. <laughs> 